Intel has new chips, Qualcomm has a new chip, and NVIDIA, did they just release the Series X killer? Happy September, friends, and it might just be a September to remember. Uh, a lot of companies announced some actual hardware this week. While none of them were a Series S, uh, Intel announced new hardware, Qualcomm announced new hardware, uh, NVIDIA, just a whole smattering of chips that have been announced that we will dive into here in just a minute. But we're going to kick things off here with one of my favorite apps, Teams. Teams is now has, well, Teams now has a list app, and it is reaching general availability. It's technically generally available now but you may or may not have it um, but you know check your tenant if that's all that good stuff so diving into Qualcomm so this week Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 2 uh, for PCs and so this is the follow-up to their last generation 8CX and it is significantly faster up to 50% in certain workloads and all that good stuff um, realistically what this just means is that hey the next generation of Windows on ARM devices are going to be utilizing this chipset from Qualcomm including Microsoft itself although Microsoft will likely call it something fancy like they've got the sq1 processor in the surface pro x they might call it the sq2 i really hope they don't call it sq1 gen 2 but that is a very microsoft way of naming things but whatever uh qualcomm you can go check out that full spec list if you're really diving into that realistically what you need to know is that if you like the pro x this is just going to make it somewhat better uh, a little bit more performant but i don't think we're looking at any revolutionary like speed figures here out of the qualcomm team um, but it should have 5g it should be uh just you know, just a modest upgrade across the board for the chipset. Uh, Intel also debuted their 11th generation core chips. And what better way to do that than with a new logo and typically, uh, well, my reason for their, their building out a new chipset and along with a new logo is that Intel has a lot of headwinds right now. Um, you know, you have ARM creeping up on them. You have AMD doing really, really good stuff in the chipset business. And so Intel has just been under a lot of pressure. And one of the things you can kind of do to boost morale and, and just try to start to change your image is to introduce a new logo. And that's what they have done. It's no like major change. It is a little more, more a little more modern and fresh. Uh, if I can get the words out of my mouth. Um, we'll get to NVIDIA in a second, but Samsung also announced the Galaxy Z Fold 2, which will be launching September 18th at the very stout price of $19.99. Uh, we'll have more on the Surface Duo next week. There's uh, the, the reviews uh, will be coming out before the device launches. Um, but can't really talk too much about it, but whatever. At two grand, it does put in sort of a value proposition, if you will, compared to the Surface Duo, which is up to about five-ish hundred dollars less, give or take somewhere around there, depending on your, your specific skew that you pick out. Uh, they are inherently somewhat different devices where the Duo is two actual different displays. The Galaxy Fold 2 is, well, just one giant display. And so it's the good The good thing here is you have choices. And depending on what you're looking for, you have options. And depending on what your budget is, you have options. That is sort of the beauty of the Android market. And for some people, that might be the Duo. Uh, and for other people, that's going to be the Galaxy Fold 2. Um, I can't quite I can't get Galaxy Z Fold 2. It's just Fold 2. That's that's what I'm going with. Um, and TikTok, which we've talked about a bunch here just because it's going to be bought maybe eventually, uh, was rumored by, I think, CNBC that it was going to be announced as early as like Tuesday or something like that. Still don't know. Um, we'll find out who's going to be the lucky winner or something like that. We'll find out here inevitably uh, in the future, but we still don't know. Although now that I'm recording this podcast, I guess that they'll probably announce it right after this. So on to the gaming news. Uh, big news in the gaming world this week with the announcement of the RTX 30 series or 3000 series, whatever you want to call it. We have the 3090, which was previously known as like the Titan. Uh, and then we have the RTX 3080 and we have the RTX 3070. Now here's sort of the, the you know, shooting, not even shooting from the hip. I have looked at these cards quite a bit because I might be buying one uh, in the near future, but we will see how that turns out. Anyways, here's what you need to know. The RTX 3070 is going to be the card that is going to be selling everywhere because for $500. Now I am fully aware that $500 is not it's not nothing that is a serious chunk of change but for five hundred dollars you are going to get better performance based on their information now we haven't gotten third-party independent reviews yet but those should be coming in the not too distant future um i think digital foundry might have gotten some early hands-on access but we're talking across the board uh, uh benchmarking so it looks like the rtx 3070 outperforms and this is crazy outperforms the 2080 ti and that is that is significant nvidia has actually done a really fantastic job here of bringing um, high quality gaming down to a more reasonable price point. Now, 
the big question here is, is like, you know, what about the 3080 and the 3090? Uh, 3080 is going to cost you about 700 bucks and the 3090 is going to be extremely expensive at about $1,500. So you could go buy a duo or you could go buy an RTX 3090 and the 3090 is a big boy uh, or big girl, whatever you want to call it. It's about the size of an Xbox Series X. Not even kidding. It looks huge based on its rough dimensions that we have seen so far. And so it is, it's a big card. It's a big card and you're going to need, um, you're going to have to look at your PC case carefully along with the power solution to actually drive power because it is a 300, 350 watt card, which is, which is a lot. It's a lot of wattages uh, to get that, but you get some extreme performance up to 8K. Uh, gaming is promised on this device and it will be, it'll be phenomenal if you can afford it and make it actually run in your system. You will have no issues and you will have the best of the best gaming, gaming, graphic fidelity, there's no question about it, but I think there's going to be a large market that also goes for the 3080, but I think the sweet spot is clearly the 3070. And the interesting thing that NVIDIA has done here, they announced these cards, which are their next generation gaming cards. They've already priced these cards, and they're also told us the availability. The 3070 is coming in October of 2020 this year. 3080 will be about September 17th, and the 3090 will be on the September 24th. So they've done the exact opposite of what next-gen consoles have done, where they've talked about these things for over a year, and we don't have a price, we don't even have a release date, and NVIDIA just comes and says, ah, here you go. Now, the big question here in the things that, that the headlines that were making the big splash that was, oh, NVIDIA just killed the next generation PlayStation 5 and the, the Series X, which are going to be um, whatever. This is a tale as old as time. Every time a console comes out, it typically has a, a previous ish generation of GPU. That's just the way it works because these consoles are in development for such a long time that by the time they hit the market, they have to go, they can't build with stuff that didn't exist when they started specking it out. This is very much in line with expectations and this isn't a big surprise the other thing you got to keep in mind here too is that based on what we know so far the whole series x console that means the storage drive that means that the graphics card the cpu and everything else is going to be 500 dollars somewhere around that price point so you can either go buy a gpu for $500, or you can buy the whole dang console for $500. So while these cards are going to be, you know, they're, they're going to outperform probably what the Series X does in almost all capacity, and that's not that surprising. But it, it's also not that surprising that it's going to cost more to build out a PC for high-end gaming than it will be to get a Series X. That's just the nature of the way it works. And so when somebody says, ah, oh, the RTX 3070, I'll just buy that instead of a console. Well, good. That is good. Because then you can get better gaming for $500. For other people who don't have a even mid-range or modest PC, 500 bucks gets you the whole dang console and then you don't have to worry about anything else. This is just how PC gaming works. It'll always be ahead of console. There's nothing to worry about. The Series X is still going to be fantastic. It already has all the uh, DirectX 12 features. Uh, Jason Rowland uh, confirmed that on Twitter. There's no, like, you're not going to lose out on uh, DX12 functionality that has been talked about this week. It's all baked into the Series X, which is a good thing. Although I am still very intrigued because Flight Sim uh, is what I've been playing a lot on my PC, and I'm still using a uh, GTX 1080, and that 3070 might be eventually sliding its way into uh, into that PC because that looks like it's going to be a good device for, for what I'm doing. Um, speaking of Flight Sim, by the way, Microsoft said it is the biggest Xbox Game Pass for PC launch ever. Now, that's, that's kind of qualified a bit because it's not just biggest Xbox Game Pass ever. Uh, it's for PC, but still, the X, Flight Sim is wonderful. It, it is by far the most PC gaming I have done in quite some time, and I do occasional PC game. I'm still primarily on the Xbox uh, One X, but the Flight Sim, I have been playing it a ton. I have been playing it a ton, and as we heard earlier this week in the video, the Xbox Series S branding showed up once again on a Game Pass subscription cards that are showing up uh, on, if you go to the Best Buy or whatever, buy a controller, and you look at the little retail card for Game Pass Ultimate, like two-week trial or whatever it is, um, it's saying Series S, so it should be soon, hopefully, because it's Series Soon uh, is kind of the meme right now rather than Series S. So on to the questions of the week before we plow into a holiday. Let me refresh the thread. I always tweet this out. You can just find me on Twitters, uh, at BDSams, at Simon says... TikTok signed a $900 million deal with Google for three years of cloud services in September of last year. If Microsoft, Oracle, or any other company does manage to buy TikTok, uh, will they continue to use Google Cloud or rather pay for Google to get out of the deal? Good question. So basically, they're locked into a contract for Google Cloud services. 
how are they going to get out of this and what are they going to do? Well, you got to keep in mind that just let's let's say be optimistic that Microsoft or Oracle buys this company quite literally 10 minutes after this podcast done. Um, if they are not going to be able to just jump over to their own cloud overnight. It is a, going to be a massive journey. And so realistically, if they're already a year in, to be fully off of Google Cloud might take them at least a year, if not longer, to full, make that full migration because it's again, it's a really popular live service and they can't afford any downtime. So they got to do it kind of behind the scenes. And so um, it would not surprise me if they actually just ride that contract out, you know, at the bare minimums and make that migration once it's done because it's going to, again, take some time for them to actually get over. Uh, Usman says, can you go through the surface leaks? Uh, surface surface leaks that have been uh, walking. Ah. Can you go through the surface names that have leaked who have been posted by walking cats? So there's been some fun Twitter drama, uh, if you will. So there's a, I've referenced them here many times. Walking cat on Twitter is a an infamous sort of leaker of Microsoft stuff that hits their servers and is not public yet. And his account got suspended on Twitter and he created another one. And he just kind of got some revenge and just started tweeting out just like quite literally everything that he knew. And he's got some more stuff coming, I believe. Um, and so there's a bunch of stuff that he talked about. I'm not quite ready to dig into it. I know that Zeta uh, is the Surface Duo 2, and I believe it does have 5G. I've heard that already a couple times, uh, and so that's not too not that big of a surprise. Olympus, uh, based on what I've heard so far, is the next generation Surface Hub. Um, the, the Not the next generation, but the larger one. Remember, they promised two of them, 55 and 85 inch. And so 85 inch is the Olympus name that he has been tweeting about. Uh, and so there's some been some other stuff that I believe is related to the fall announcements. Um, and so I'll have to dig into those and get, get on board um, with everything going on. So uh, Sherlock Holmes says, Hi Brad, I'm a few weeks in with the iPhones and so far... Uh, so far, so good. I'm glad I finally got rid of most of Google stuff except for Maps. Uh, but is it possible to transfer files from your PC to your phone via the USB lightning cable? Somehow that doesn't work to me. Um, so yeah, so you can. You can transfer files from your iPhone to your PC directly. You're going to need to install the terrible software known as iTunes. And then I believe you have to turn on uh, disk mode. And so you're going to have to find a tutorial online on how to do it. But it is absolutely possible that once you walk through all the steps and then you just enable that functionality, you can drag and drop, I believe, through File Explorer. Um, so that should work. NGC224 says, if Microsoft is betting the farm on Duo V2, why doesn't Microsoft just say that V1 is not for normal people and wait for V2? Uh, leave V1 for the hardcore enthusiast. I don't know why Microsoft always feels the need to be so deceptive. Um, well, this is tech though, right? First off, it takes a long time to get product one out. And when Microsoft shipped the Surface RT, they were almost done developing the Surface RT too. This is just the nature. Like when the iPhone 12 launches um, next month or whatever it is, iPhone 13 is probably already significantly along in the development life cycle, considering they start prototyping those things in the early spring. So this is just kind of par for the course for technology. If you want to launch something on roughly an annualized basis or even close to that, you've got to have V2 already in the pipeline when V1 starts shipping. I don't think it would do them any justice to come out and say, hey, buy V2 um, or, or V1 is only for the enthusiast. They're kind of already indicating that, though, to some extent, because they're only launching it initially in the U.S., and so take that for what you will. But that's just the nature of tech cycle. It, it's same in the automobiles. You go buy a car today, the next next year's model is already in, deep into the development cycle. That's just kind of how the world works. Um, Big Brad Bad uh, says, any news of the Surface Pro redesign announcement this fall, similar to the Surface Pro X design? I'm still hearing that that was on the agenda as of earlier this spring. I believe it's called Carmel is the name of the redesign. It was initially supposed to go live last year, but they punted it, I believe, until this year because they announced the launch of the Pro X last year, which has the new design. And so look for a similar design on the Pro, I believe, this year. Uh, Thrust Bucket says, two questions for you. Question one, with the success of Game Pass and the skepticism about Microsoft movie and TV sticking around, how likely do you think it is at some point Microsoft will start adding streaming movies and TVs to Game Pass. It almost seems like a no-brainer as a value add to Game Pass, even if the content is older or ha and has ads. So, not a crazy thought, right? Microsoft has a, a TV and movie place like where you can go out and get that stuff. Um, it, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that that might happen. The only thing that trips me up on this is licensing. I, I, we don't know exactly what Microsoft's licensing deal was for all that stuff when they initially signed the contracts and to put it into Game Pass subscription like that, they might have to go back to the table and renegotiate all that stuff, which I can't imagine Microsoft doing. Microsoft has found a nice little avenue with Game Pass and being sort of a leader in that segment by just throwing in movies and TVs. I don't think they're necessarily going to gain anything and not to mention they probably have to raise the price. So I 
I don't personally see it happening, although I don't think there's too much like on a technical limitation. It's probably more of a licensing issue than anything else. Uh, second question is, I feel like the best evidence we have so far is that the Series S is digital only is the fact that physical games are already hitting shelves with the Series X logo. If the Series S had a disc drive, it would be extremely messy to try and correct the messaging already on shelves. Do you agree? I do tend to agree that if you ship a box and it says Series X on it, uh, that it, that makes a lot of sense. That would be that would justify the lack of a disc drive on the Series S. We just hope that Mr. Microsoft or Mrs. Microsoft uh, will announce what they are doing doing here in the not too distant future which i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure they will uh will says when do you think we could expect microsoft to announce the pricing and pre-order availability of the series x any idea if they will be a special launch edition or have higher storage versions so with they already i don't I don't know if they're going to have a higher storage version, but don't quote me on that because they've already announced their strategy for but, or having that external card. Remember, that plugs right in and, and they have those fancy animations that show how it connects directly to the Xbox Velocity architecture. It would not surprise me if we saw bundles with, an, a, with a card included, but I don't know about additional internal storage, but that is something we'll have to wait and see. The pricing is ridiculous at this point. We are already into September. These consoles are launching in, in, in six to eight weeks we don't even know how the pricing we don't know the availability um and they're sitting here playing this game of chicken and um it's a, it's a funny game and the only losers are us uh len fred says one more thing what are your favorite tater tot toppings oh we actually have two questions we'll get to the tater tots next uh len fred says do you have any new information about the surface studio monitor no i haven't i i I got to look into these code names. So a bunch of code names just leaked um, as, uh, who was it? As Usman uh, kind of poked around. He said, hey, uh, Walking Cat dumped a bunch of code names, which several of them I've already known. And some of them are not related to hardware. Some of them are software functionality. I know that for a fact. Um, so I got to look into those and see if those are the actual Surface Studio monitor. I haven't heard anything specifically about this fall. Um, primarily because I've been focusing so much on this dang Xbox. I got to start seeing what Microsoft has up its sleeve for Surface hardware, but it should be another good event from what I remember hearing earlier in the year that Microsoft was pretty bullish on their holiday lineup. Keep in mind, that was all pre-pandemic. So uh, one more thing, what is your favorite tater tot toppings? That is a great question. So to me, I love tater tots. Usually I'm eating them in New York after a Surface hardware event or sometimes before. Uh, there's a great place in New York called Rattle and Hum. Uh, now, well, now there's only one, hope, and I'm hoping knock on wood that they survive. But my favorite tater tot topping has to be queso. Uh, that is the least healthy option. Uh, but tater tots with queso, um, maybe some habaneros in there, maybe some jalapenos. Uh, I like spicy food. Spicy tater tots with queso would be my jam. That wraps it up for this week, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out. It is a holiday weekend here in the United States. Most people have Monday off, so it might be a bit slower next week. But we shall see, and I'll keep you updated.